Hello everyone, in this video we're going to rebuild my Warren Trident and install reversed electronic box. I bought new 6 mirrors of gates belts from Triangle Labs. I bought pin mod, I bought new pouch idlers, those will help us to reduce wobble into the belts assembly. And I bought new extruder gears which will probably help me to reduce inconsistencies into the extrusion of my clockworks too. I also had to reprint all purple parts because I couldn't find KVP in the United States and shipping it from Canada was way more expensive than buying a new spool of Overture ABS which I like way more, it prints much easier than KVP but having a new spool of filament requires me to change the color and you can see how different those two purple colors are so I had to print every part from scratch and we're going to install it so i'll take everything apart and we start rebuilding it it will be a bit painful but i think this journey worth it before we move over changing printer kinematics i've decided to fix a couple of things that bother me for a while now the first one is led issue related to poor signal performance on manta series boards where led signal was degrading while printer is printing my initial idea was to run led lights from manta board gpio pins but problem is that clipper hose doesn't support directly connected neopixels so i have tried to use the buffer to convert 3 volts logical to 5 volts but the problem is the GPIO pins in Linux host does not allow the speed we need for LED to work. In this case, the only easy way to go was using standalone controller with WLED firmware to control LEDs. I have found detailed GitHub post by Gliptopolis on how to configure WLED to work with Clipper. All links will be into the description. This mod is actually pretty cheap and you can get controller to run WLED for a few dollars from AliExpress. In my case, I'm installing tiny Speed Studio ESP32 board, which easily handles 42 LEDs I'm using in my build. Next, I would like to get rid of that useless filter box that located at the back of my printer. I have never used it and in my filter fan was not even connected. At some point, I have noticed that box glued via double-sided tape started to fall off and when I printed ABS, fumes were escaping from enclosure. So I'm replacing it with mod by Steve Builds from Warren Team to a simple plate with PT fee tube holder. I really like that very clean and simple solution. The last but not least was to make a fan mount for 4010 fan so it could keep my CB2 model cooled especially when I print with high enclosure temperature. As an inspiration I have used part from printables made by a vaguely useful user and designed my own mount that fitted parts I had on hands. When we finally got those little fixes out of the way the next step was to start and slowly take printer apart getting rid of panels and replacing simply approachable parts. And here you can actually see one of the main reasons why I have decided to overhaul the kinematics of this machine. One day, tuning up the printer, I noticed that my X-axis assembly has some wobble, so later I had to replace X-axis rail as well. While taking printer apart, I have decided to check belts and turned out one of the belts was two teeth longer and it finally explains why on a belt resonant test I wasn't getting proper results. Other than that, belts actually look pretty good and I have decided to keep those in service for a little longer. You can see on my X and Y motors assembly we have some gunk. And initially I thought it was from the belts rubbing on pulleys, but upon closer inspection turned out that my bearings had some rubber seals and those just fell apart, leaving the mess. So I just removed them completely and after cleaning bearings time came to slowly assemble kinematics back with using pins instead of originally designed bolts. I have purchased several pulleys and you can see how much play pulley has with the bolt and how different the tolerances compare to pouch pulleys. To be fair, I am not fully convinced that pin mod has huge benefits as when the pulley is under the belt tension it stays in one position, but this mod was $10 and I have decided to go with it, as I had issues before with assembly on bolts getting binded around the pulleys, as bolts require proper tightening and I wasn't able to fine tune it. 
During the rebuild I have removed all unnecessary weight from gantry as in the next video I have plans to install lighter tool head and maybe get rid of warrant up to save more weight and go faster. Rest of the assembly was pretty straightforward. I even forgot to install the shim when I assembled the motor mounts, but it was pretty easy to fix compared to little wobble that I had in my x-axis. To solve those I had to change my x-axis linear rail and I was fortunate to have second tap from which I took smaller rail to fix my V2 tap issue and after kinematics was assembled I moved over the reverse electronics mod. I have finished with all the kinematics, now we are going to work with electronics. You can see huge mess out here and I hope it's gonna be a huge difference in a second. Took out all the electronics, now I'm going to turn the printer around and try to install the rails upside down and slowly assemble electronics back. To install reverse electronic mod you will have to replace Z motor mounts and with help of new brackets mount DIN rails upside down. The process was pretty straightforward and after electronics was mounted back I had to finish tool head assembly and install new extruder gears and after installing those gears I was pretty disappointed. The pattern I was trying to solve was still presented. And later one discovery shook me a bit as I was able to solve this problem with a simple extruder config change. Why I'm saying shook me a bit? Cause I have spent weeks debugging this issue on my Warren Enderwire, rebuilding extruder with all sorts of gears again and again and again and at some point I just gave up. Solution was simple, changing steps from 32 to 16 completely got rid of the issue for me. I have checked and same solution worked on my Enderwire, I can't describe how happy I am to see this issue goes away. Just roughly assembled everything back to make sure electronics is working perfectly fine after mounting it upside down, running Z-Tilt and it looks perfectly fine. So far almost all the job is finished, I need to put back panels, I need to make sure wiring is looking good and we are going to try to print something. And here I got stuck in a world of tuning for a few days. After getting rid of that situation, I had to move and clean up the wiring. Inspired by Warren Zero Cable Channel Mod, I have made bigger sized channels, but never used those, as I really like how clean and easy to manage my current electronics box is. I finished final wiring, maybe we'll clean a little bit, put the back panel, but for now let's power on. Okay, everything seems to be started perfectly fine, but there is no blue smoke. And tool head also started. Very good. Lights will kick in and change the color whenever clipper is loaded. Other than that, beautiful. Everything seems to be working. Finally, wiring was finished and I could button up the panels and move on with final tuning. To mount panels, I have used Annex Engineering Click Install and Remove Panel Clips that I've been using on my top panel for about a year now and I really like how fast you can remove panels with those. Also, I have spent some time making a part to mount and fix the issue with CNC hinges so they would sit flush with the extrusions. Just assembled everything, tested, I don't like resonances discussing stuff in a Warren Discord group and realized maybe I need a support for my umbilical cord. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Disassemble everything and start working on the support for the cable. Also, we'll get rid of that motor wires I have connected separately as I connected my motor directly into the EBP board. So moving forward, I have remade couple of parts. One of them is the umbilical port holder next to tool head and another one I have used one of those mods for Bowden tube and I modified that and made one to hold umbilical cord. All of those you will find in my github. To summarize, I definitely learned a lot during the last few weeks, but at the same time with knowledge comes dissatisfaction. Now my shaper graphs are looking much better and I definitely can print faster than before, but it is still not enough. 
issues like insufficient part cooling and very heavy tool head stops me from going fast. Considering current market and amount of money I have spent building this machine, its overall performance stays around quality of, of Bamboo Lab printer. There is no reason for me to have this printer just for regular printing as my current print farm already have plenty Bamboo Lab printers. I want to learn new things with this machine and push speeds and accelerations higher. So in next video I will be investing time and money in making my tool head lighter and sturdier. And if you like the journey, leave your comments, subscribe and I will see you at the next video. Bye bye.